Unrelated male cheetahs who didn't grow up together typically become aggressive enemies in the wild or in captivity. Unrelated male-on-male -male cheetah aggression is natural as each vie to pass on their genes to the next progeny. Hmm, it uh, makes me wonder if cheetah enemies could ever become friends. Going. Probably not. In this video from Kruger National Park, two unrelated male cheetahs fight over a female. On their own, enemy male cheetahs can't make up. It's different between humans and cheetahs building relationships due to time and effort, and of course, offering food. Even uh, after a Zara next door here, I'm worried about I'm not eating, because I've got a little fat piece here. Oh, there you go, buddy. There you go. There. Good boy, good boy. Cheetah enemies never give themselves a chance to build relationships. It's not natural. In a captive setting, you can't place enemy cheetahs next to each other. They'll fight and injure themselves. In some instances, you have to put them out of sight, out of mind, so they can't see each other. Skylar just disappeared behind one of the bushes there. Gator was like, I see you. I got keen eyesight. I love it. Keen eyesight. So, what to do to mitigate? I try something unorthodox. Scent enrichment. They know Gabriel's here and they don't like him. And of course, Gabriel doesn't like them either. Big powerful males are a threat. Here, Levi and Logan are checking out Gabriel's camp, sniffing his essence. Just like wolves and dogs, cheetahs mark their territory with urine. Scent enrichment is one of the activities cheetahs really enjoy. Here, what I got here is a uh, uh, rear end wipes from another oh, cheetah oh, is a favorite scent enrichment you can offer a captive right cheetah. Look here, look here, look here. Smell it, smell it. He thought it was food I had for him. Oh, what is that? I don't know I'm eating it, but oh, we got a flipping response. There you go. This is uh, let me finish uh, my, my statement before Gabriel came rushing in here trying to eat it. It's uh, basically a uh, rear end wipe of one of the female cheetahs that's pregnant. Uh, well, we think it's pregnant, it looks pregnant, uh, it was planned pregnancy. Hi there, buddy. And it's also got uh, uh, Gabriel's arch enemy, um, Logan, on here. Because Logan gets to sniff this before Gabriel did. And his brother, Levi. What do you think, buddy? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> Don't eat it. You can't eat it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt him, but it's just, you know. I got a flaming, I got a flaming response. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Hello, hello. I like that, huh? I like that, huh? Over here, over here. Just don't eat it, I want to lick it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna spit it out good. It's just toilet paper, it's just not gonna hurt him or anything. Even the stuff that's on it's not gonna hurt him, but he's really into it. Look at him. <laughs> you like that, buddy? I like in Richard Gabriel's life. Cheetahs love to smell things, especially if it's cheetah related, you know? Food, like he can't, he can't get his nose deep enough into it. <laughs> you like that, huh, buddy? I thought you'd like that. No, I thought you'd like that. Oh, stinky smells. Stinkier the better, huh? Yeah, stinkier the better. Are you snarling? Look at it. That's a Fleming response, like horses do when they, or um, lions when they gather as much scent as possible. And that little organ, this little Jacobson organ, it's underneath their palate. Other, other uh, upper uh, jaw there. Hey, you like that, huh, buddy? I knew you'd like that. <laughs> yeah, it's good, huh? Now look at his mouth. Yeah, go purr. Let me clean up the rest of the mess here, huh? You like that, buddy, huh? Oh, got to get a call to it. Isn't that cute? That's, that's, that's Gabriel, though. Uh, he's ready to breathe for sure. Look at him. You like that, huh? And a call? The sound Gabriel just made is a mating call. It's interesting, though, because uh, Sakira is not in heat. But she's probably putting out some type of hormone for pregnancy, maybe? 
because a cheetah will get uh, very excited about uh, a female in heat. There's certain hormonal um, chemicals released that cheetahs pick up on. Like Gabriel. You like that, buddy, huh? Let me turn it over. Oh, he's really into this. Eat some of it, huh? I don't want you eating, Gabriel. So it's unlikely Gabriel and Logan will ever become friends. But I wanted Gabriel to experience an essence of Logan that he would not normally get on his own. Sniffing a piece of his fur. Sometimes familiarity can lead to better relationships. That's my hope. Sometimes unrelated cheetahs can join already formed coalitions. This is a arch nemesis uh, fur from a uh, little tough fur from one of Gabriel's arch nemesi, um, Logan. So, I don't know, he's enriched in Gabriel with it. They're, they're actually uh, not friends. Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen Gabriel get really aggressive is toward other cheetahs, male cheetahs. He does not like most male cheetahs. Um, now he won't, out, he won't react negatively to this. I mean, he'll just sniff and be curious. Hey, Gabriel, look at this. Hey, Gabriel. Look, hey, look, Gabriel, look. Gabriel, look, here. There. There's his arch nemesis. That's George, uh, Logan. Logan's hair. <laughs> there. It's a lot different when there's actually a the persona attached to the fur and the smell and the scent of your, your enemy, right? For Gabriel, it's just something curious. He may not even know this is uh, um, Logan's hair, my hair tuft. What do you think, buddy? No, you gonna eat it? If we don't eat it, ah, oh. he should spit it out. Oh, he ate it. Oh, there goes a hairball. <laughs> oh crap! He actually ate it. Wow, that's crazy, Gabriel. Well, I didn't expect him to do that, <laughs> but um, you know, they, when they groom themselves, they get hair in their, in their mouths. All cats do. And uh, someone, someone asked me before, and I don't even know. Do, uh, do cheetahs get hairballs? And I, I, I was told yes, but I, I have yet to see one. Uh, I only see it in, the, in their poo when it comes out uh, afterward. Um, now, because you know, when they're shedding, they're always grooming. They they, they lose massive amounts of fur uh, when they're uh, during the summertime because they shed. Staying coat on right now. You can see it's it's uh, nice and thin and trim. Uh, so all that undercoat comes off and they it comes off naturally falls off when they're walking or laying down rubbing but also when they're grooming themselves constantly you know, Gabriel looks fairly clean hey buddy <laughs> look at it. Hey, say hello yeah, say hello that's hard to believe he ate part of Logan there my enemy I mean it was just fur <laughs> she <had> fur <laughs> oh I'm sorry Gabriel there you go. he's spiritual easy too Scent enrichment is a powerful tool for a cheetah project such as this. Not only can it please your captive animals, but it can be used for breeding purposes. And that's a big way I intend to use it. For instance, a male cheetah can inform you if a female cheetah is in estrus or heat. Otherwise, to determine if a female cheetah is in estrus, you have to depend on behavioral changes, calling, some minute physiological changes, taking blood samples, or testing their urine or poo. But all those require constant observation, sedation, or a tamed, trained cheetah. But a male cheetah like Gabriel here can tell you right away. Just scoop up some dirt from where a female cheetah just peed, give a male cheetah a whiff, and there you go. I got kinds of nasties on my hand now. You done, buddy? You, you like that? Yeah, you like that. Good boy, good boy. Yeah, you like that, smell. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. I'm glad I can enrich you there. Huh? I'll give you a little scent enrichment. I gave her, he's big into that. Scent enrichment. Follow me.